Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krauss, and on today's episode of The Health Fix podcast, I have Kathleen, the allergy chef, back on. Now, if you haven't heard any of her podcasts before, she is a guru when it comes to food sensitivities, having over 200 food allergies herself, and I mean allergies, not just sensitivities, she has created a whole database to help folks just like her to be able to research recipes. And she's got a membership site as well, and we'll be talking about that at the end of the podcast. But today, she and I are diving into the things that you need to live healthy for life. Clean air, clean water, clean food, good medicine, and movement. And we're going to be talking all about those guys. And we're also throwing in how the two of us would really like to help future generations to live healthier and avoid a lot of what's being programmed to us via television, social media, things of that nature. We're concerned about the future generation. And so today we're talking about that, but we're also talking about all of us in our 30s, 40s, and beyond and what we can do to really get healthy, stay healthy for life. So you ready for another episode? All right, let's get into the podcast. Hey, health junkies. Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. I've got Kathleen back. And today we're talking about the vagus nerve and how that has some really interesting connections to food sensitivities, food allergies, food intolerances, whatever you want to call it. Because let's put it this way. A lot of people are stressed out. Wouldn't you agree? Oh my goodness. And when you get stressed out, what happens to your gut? Hmm. Stops working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we've both been seeing people on on both sides of of your work, my work, and seeing people with a whole bunch of stuff going down in the gut. I feel like more people now, I swear since the pandemic, more people now have food sensitivities, intolerances, allergies that have like came out of nowhere with trash guts than I've ever seen before. Okay. So that's the whole thing, right? Okay. We're looking at multiple things here. We've got long-term root cause, I guess, why don't we say pre and post, right? Because we've got pre-pandemic people and post-pandemic people. So I feel like our line in the sand is going to be about two to two and a half years, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for the people who are in the newer boat, I mean, here's the thing. They were told to stay home. So no Mm -hmm. sunshine. Gyms were closed. So we're not exercising. We're not doing all the positive things with the body, et cetera. Okay. And I'm not saying you couldn't have exercise. It's that a lot of people, when they fall out of their routine, it, it just, they kind of fall apart. Right. Mm -hmm. We look at short-term unhealthy weight gain. Most people were just eating for comfort at that point, which not judging. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a hard time. I mean, it's, it's a reasonable response to a hard time, but what no one saw coming was how long the time would be, right? Mm -hmm. Because had the, had it just been a legit two weeks or even a four week thing, people would have bounced back, right? But they didn't. And so it was like this extended, extended, extended. And like you said, with stress, right? Because now we're looking at well, now we've got job losses, we've got economic issues, we've got health issues, and now we're depleting our own immune system and its resources. Well, of course, we're going to have problems, right? I mean, isn't that kind of the foundation of leaky gut itself? Yeah. Right? Weakened immunity, weakened barrier. That's exactly how it starts. I mean, it was a recipe for disaster. Oh, I mean, 
in so many different ways, in so many different ways, because now we have people who, yeah, you think when it's two weeks, you're like, oh, sweet. I'm getting all my snacks. Like, like, so you're snowed in. I mean, I think a lot of people took the concept of like, I'm snowed in. So yeah. I'm going to go get my snacks. When I went to the store, I was like, oh, shoot, I can pretty much still shop the same because nobody was getting the organic produce. Nobody wanted that. No, I went down the aisle of Doritos. I was like, uh-huh. I see where we're at here. I, okay. I feel you guys. I know what's going on here. But, you know, you add stress and then you add all these foods that have a whole bunch of chemicals in them. Yeah. And now we get <laughs> compounding situations. Yeah, we absolutely do. I mean, it's it's really hard because, you know, I always say air, water, food, medicine, right? Those are the four key things that sets apart people who, I mean, technically you could say a fifth one and say movement, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's going to set apart the healthy from the unhealthy. Now, and that's going to be most situations. You're always going to have the outliers who were born with something and you've got the genetic conditions and that sort of stuff, which I'm not even going to focus on because that's a whole different topic. But for those five things, right? It's like, when you look at people who live in the middle of nowhere, I'm talking like forest, third world country type stuff, right? They're not dealing with food allergy, food intolerance, mental health crises, you know, ADHD, every other diagnosis with a label. They're not dealing with that. They might have one or two people in the entire village that deal with it, but it's so rare. They have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Well, then you switch over to a highly developed nation and it's the opposite. What's the difference? It's those five things, air, water, food, medicine, movement. That's it. That's literally the only real things separating us right now. Do they have other illnesses that we don't? Of course, because now we're looking at the difference between, you know, hygiene and sewage and all that sort of stuff versus the other side of the world where it's totally different, right? Access to clean water, no, act like, and it's yet, it's still the same five things, air, water, food, uh, medicine, movement, right? They're not polluting their bodies with, you know, necessarily the same stuff that we are. And we look at those five things. If we keep just looking at those five things, it all adds up, right? I think one of the most scary stats that no one talks about, at least in my opinion, enough is how during the first, I want to say year of the lockdowns, SIDS, sudden infant death, sudden infant death syndrome. Yeah. No, I think yeah. that's what, yeah. yeah, that's how, that's the acronym dropped by more than 40%. Okay. 40%. And the one attribute that linked all these kids they weren't getting the vaccines, right? Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, don't get the vaccine. That's not my message. My message is more like, shouldn't you be questioning what we're injecting into children? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we at least question? I mean, you know, there's some really great photos, very powerful imagery that show you the amount of shots your child is expected to have within like the first two years. It's an insane amount of injections. Mm -hmm. You have to ask, were they born deficient from all of those things? I think not. Now, could we maybe look at an adjusted schedule? Oh, of course, right? Like the crazy thing is, is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, vaccines have done so much. Actually, if you look at the chart over time, it was sewage and hygiene that made the biggest difference in these communicable and deadly diseases compared to vaccine. We're talking like a 90% versus a 5% difference here, huge differences. But we're so quick to look at big pharma, like they're gonna save us. Okay, no, they're not, right? Like, let's rewind a hundred years. They didn't need big pharma to save them then. Why do we need big pharma to save us now, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're having a heart attack, oh my goodness, big pharma can really help you, okay? <laughs> but are we creating the problem though? I mean, I go back to that SIDS number and I say, we're creating the problem. We're creating the problem in some people, not all people, you know? And it's like, if you look at the pamphlets and you read the side effects, the manufacturers tell you up front all the crazy things can happen if you move forward, right? You know, it's like we look at the different things that CDC and FDA and all these other government agencies have quietly admitted, right? They're not blasting these things on, on mainstream news and social media, et cetera. In fact, you're deemed a quack if you even reference their own websites and i'm like there's so much more going on here and it for me it really just hammers home the fact that we as individuals 
I think our real job is to take control of those five things. Mm -hmm. Air, water, food, medicine, movement, right? Is your air clean? Do you need an air filter in your house? Like, you know, do you live in a highly polluted city? Like, what's your deal? Clean up your air, right? Water. Are you like, you know, what's crazy. Okay. So I know, you know, about Flint and everything that went down. Oh yeah. I read something so powerful and yet so simple. Do you really think Flint is the only city? And I was like, what? That's yeah. crazy. Because, you know, we, we get all hyped up about Flint and we forget that there's a gajillion other cities on the map. And there, oh, how many of those cities are going to be corrupt as well? Do we really think that was an isolated event? I mean, are we naive to believe that it was? I think so. And so you have to ask, is my water clean? Do I need a water filter? You know, a water filter doesn't have to cost a lot. Yes, you can get a good one, you know, cost you about 300 bucks, but it makes a world of difference. And right? you're going to have it for years. Yeah. I mean, the only thing you have to do is trade out the filtering components, which will probably cost you like $50 a year or something like that, you know? Um, and so that, that takes care of your water. Then you have to look at your food, which you and I have talked about off and on so much, right? Do I need clean food? Now, is it going to cost you? Of course it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your time. But is your health worth it? Is that investment of time worth it in the long haul, right? And then, of course, medicine. If I don't need it, if I'm not born deficient in it, should the goal to be to be on it long term, right? You know, or should the goal be to be like, let's find another alternative. Let's wean ourselves off of this. You know, are you going to have people who absolutely need pharmaceuticals? Yes, of course, right? I mean, that's just the world we live in. But I also think that if people take control of those five things, I think we could drastically reduce the number of people who are on pharmaceuticals long term. Just like, it's just how they say, you know, like 80% of cancers are preventable through diet and lifestyle. It's probably this, probably about the same stat. I bet you we could drop the, the reliance on pharmaceuticals by up to 80%, if not a little bit more, you know? And then you've got movement. If you're moving your body every day, we're getting our body to do what it was designed to do. The body was not designed to sit around all day, right? Like that's the greatest lie we've been sold. Here, sit in this office chair and type on this computer in this weird position. Now go sit on your couch and watch your Netflix. Now go sit in your bed and go to like, we've been sold this lie of ignore these five things. Yeah. yeah. Cause now that I think about it, that's kind of the lie, right? Ignore these five. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ignore these five. I mean, let's not even go into chemtrails and all that, but like ignore these five. <laughs> Actually, that counts under air. We, it does we, count under air. It, count, it, it yeah. would, it would. And and so, yes, I mean, we, there's things we can't control, but the things we can control, like our indoor air, things of that nature. Yeah, no one's, no one's talking about like, hey, get this quality air filter for your health. It's like, no, do this, get a shot for your health. Do, you know, take this pill. I mean, I, for example, I have a father who's in his mid eighties. He likes to watch grit TV and grit TV really cycles between Medicare commercials and commercials about pharmaceutical medications. Like I am up what? to date on Sky Rizzy and all of the meds. I can sing their songs now. Wait, what's, what's grit? I don't have TV. I don't know what that means. It is, it is a cowboy television show so they show old cowboy okay. movies all day long okay so it's like a channel of just cowboy movies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay yeah all right and that it's like sense. ones that like are from like the 60s 50s like way back okay so stuff he grew up on stuff he grew up on stuff he was familiar with like the tales of wells fargo i've probably seen all the episodes now but <laughs> Did you know, I think it's something crazy, like we are one of the few countries in the world where pharma is allowed to advertise on television. I did People not. in other countries, they, they're they shocked when they visit and they're like, why is there an ad for medicine? Like, shouldn't your doctor be talking to you about that? It's crazy. Like to the point, I mean, that's, I did not know that. And it's crazy because literally like I can like quote things from the different commercials like are you trump fiant which is for psoriasis right and it's like in the back of my head i'm not even watching the dang tv i'm just preparing in meals and i hear it in the background and my brain is like you know god i I'm, i feel like i need psoriasis medication now because everyone else is getting it they look like they're having fun on tv i mean i'm on as well oh my goodness that's yeah. you know what's crazy about this though is like i think that you're in this really unique position because you know you are a doctor right and you're being exposed to this, not even like 
first degree. It's like second degree exposure, right? Yeah. And you're able to recognize it and call it what it is. It's scary to me because how many people don't have your degree and can't call it out and are literally just kind of like getting this stream of consciousness, right? And and that's the thing. It's like the TV, you know, it's funny because I think when you're younger and you would hear the phrase television programming, mm -hmm. right? You didn't think the literal word. And then at some point in your life, you grow up and you go, well, hot dog, they've been programming people, right? It's, it's yeah. literally what it is. It's, it's programming, right? They're telling you what to buy, what to think, you know, um, what opinions to form and um, what medication you need. And, and you're just like, wait, what? And then like, okay, do I think people should relax and watch TV shows they enjoy? Of course I do. But you also have to know that there's an underlying message in those shows, right? And what's crazy is, okay, so I have found that number. there's a couple things. Number one, at least about five or six years ago, they would wait until episode three to start putting in questionable programming, especially in children's and families programming. Like they would wait knowing that parents wanted to see like, okay, what's up? Okay, this seems good. And then they'd start dropping all the weird stuff. And you're like, whoa, I don't want my kid knowing that. Like, hold on, back up, right? Um, and then I also noticed that there is a trend where, um, and it's only because I come from a unique situation where I'm, I don't watch TV the way people, most people do, you know? Like, I might download a thing here or there, but like the way I consume it and when I consume it, it allows me to see the patterns. And so you'll see that, you know, within a certain week, all the shows talk about the same topic or within like a two week span, right? You know, or within a three or four week span, all of a sudden, every documentary, at least from the US for the most part, they're all talking about the same thing. So it's like, it doesn't matter where you try to escape to, for lack of a better word, it's the same programming, right? And I'm just like, this is crazy. Because I mean, like, I'll go a year or longer without consuming any standard television shows or, you know, any like, I'll watch documentaries that I've vetted from trusted sources, but that's about it. And so it gives you a unique perspective where you're like, whoa. And then, of course, like, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't consume media. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to ask yourself, right? Like, when you just sit around and, you know, it's 40 minutes here, 40 minutes there, 40 minutes here, 40 minutes there. And you're like watching these shows. Could you have done something better with your life? You know, like even if you had just done something better in the background, like worked out on your bike while you were watching the, the TV show. Or even or, the foot pedal thing that they advertised. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, Work could out. we have done something better? But then, then you have to ask yourself this, right? Going back to the word programming. A 60 minute television show is only 42 minutes long. And a 30 minute television show is only 21 minutes long, sometimes as long as 23. What'd they do with all the other time? They programmed you. That's literally what they did. They programmed you, right? And this is where I go, thank you, mom and dad, for not having me with television when I was younger. So I don't have that, that literally programming. I, I think they knew something then. Now my dad's just like, whatever, I want to watch my old movies. But, um, <laughs> and, and watch his commercials about drugs. But yeah, I literally like never watch TV. So I don't now. I only get like my inform. I'm only like cooking and like hearing it. But here's the crazy part though. Like you said, I'm not even in the circle of watching television. I don't pay attention to it much. So I'm happy that I haven't been programmed, but now it's like, I don't even have to watch it. I'm just in the other room and it's still getting to me. Like yeah. all of that. So then you got to ask yourself this, you ready? If you as an adult have that happening to you, what about children? And you know, what's really crazy I learned this years ago because I, I'm not, I was not a big fan. I didn't really let my kids watch a lot of TV. Children's television programming, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on the channel, they purposefully design it to hold a child's attention. They did research years ago and found that by doing rapid cut scenes, so like cut, 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 you know, every few moments, it would trigger a child's flight or fight response. 
And depending on what your child watches, if you actually just stand back and quietly watch your child physically, it's like they're on the edge of their seat. It's because they're literally on the edge of their seat. It's they're dealing with fight or flight constantly. It's why the better children's programming, um, you know, you look at like, um, I don't know, I think it was called like Little Bill back in the day. It was like about some turtle or something, right? It's slow paced. It's animated. It's there's not a ton of bright colors. There's not a lot of flashing. Fight or flight isn't being triggered because it's like this nice, even movement that kids can just track and watch and, of course, get bored and walk away. Well, how did they stop kids from getting bored and walking away? They triggered fight or flight constantly. And I'm like, so let's think about this. We're essentially hijacking their emotional response, their hormonal response. Gee, I wonder what happens after five years of that. What happens to their vagus nerve? What's happened to us adults after five plus 40 plus right? <laughs> many years yeah. of it over and over and over again? When I think about all of the like pre-pharmaceutical things we should be addressing, right? Because here's the thing. I am not against pharmaceuticals. Like in case I have not made that clear, I am not against them. I just think that like there should be a checklist, right? How much sunshine are you getting every day? How much sleep are you getting every day? How much clean water are you drinking every day? How much movement are we getting every day? How's your vagus nerve, right? Like, are we looking at the quality of food and, you know, how much stress are you under, right? You know, it's crazy. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I've experienced this firsthand. If I am under stress, especially while eating, I am physically in pain. Like, it's like I literally, like my system comes to a crashing halt cannot process mm -hmm. right yeah no How many people are, are going through that without even ex without even realizing that that's what they're going through i i think it's extremely common because most people are either driving and eating you know working and eating standing at the kitchen sink and dictating on the phone you know not paying attention to what they're doing and eating and then maybe the the pain or whatnot things are creeping in and they don't even realize it till 20 minutes later. Oh, no, no. Minutes okay, later. here's the crazy part. You ready? They realize it. And you know what they think about? They think about the commercial on TV that talked about that pain. That's mm -hmm. what they do. And, and mm -hmm. what scares me is that I wish I were being funny, but I'm not. Huh. That's really what's going on here. And so we've just accepted that all these things are supposedly normal, I guess, because we heard it on TV or something. And like the TV is not the authority, but we've made it the authority. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, there was like this commercial back in the day. I remember they were singing and, and only reason I remember is because someone sent it to me because they thought it was hilarious, but it was like for Pepto-Bismol or something. And they're like, upset stomach, diarrhea. <laughs> and it was like a whole song. And then it was, it was for Pepto-Bismol. If my stomach was hurting and I would have been watching that over and over, my brain would have been like, I need Pepto-Bismol. Like, it's not about, about the, the one where the people were dancing. It was people, right? Yeah. Yes. And they were, like, yeah, they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. I know that commercial. There were a series yeah. of them and you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I would have thought about that. I mean, shoot. Now if I get psoriasis, I'm going to be tremfiant, you know, I mean, good Lord. And if I get HIV, I'm getting Cabanuva because that's like programmed in my oh, head. My. And you just said it. It's programmed. It's in my head. That's it right now. But that's the thing. This is why I love talking to you because I want people to really hear like this is, I mean, I know better, but I hear it. And so you can hear me. I can repeat like, shoot, you want to tell me five, eight, eight, two, three hundred empire. I mean, like I can give you the, the commercial for the oh my carpet. Goodness, I mean, me. I have a, like, and I don't even want that in my brain, but because it's, it's audio that you hear and you're not even paying attention to it. It's things that this is where I, I try to really hone in on people. Like I think a lot of food sensitivities truly come from our vagus nerve being stressed. We're eating stressed. And we're, we're like programmed to be on hyper alert all the time. Of like, oh my God, do I need to be trim fiant? Do I have psoriasis? Oh my God, what's going on in my hair? You know, like, it's like, it's like okay. a circle. You know, okay. I was talking to a friend who also has teenagers and um, our kids are all about the same age. And she was like, I don't know about your kids, but my kids and all their friends, they're into this whole self-diagnosis thing. Mm -hmm. My kid comes up to me the other day and says, I think I have bipolar disorder. And I'm like, and she says, I say to my kid, no, sweetheart, you don't. And I have to explain to her what it really is. And she's like, 
oh, you know, these kids are being exposed to, do you have this, 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 or this? I bet you have that. Do you have this, 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 or this? I bet you have that. They're not being told like the whole story Mm -hmm. or the extremes Mm -hmm. that the symptoms need to be to be, you know, to have that illness. And so not only that, but like, I'm seeing this trend with today's youth where, you know, if, if life has got them down for a week, they're like ready to jump off a bridge. Mm -hmm. Where's the resiliency, you know, like it's gone. And I don't even know how we as a society can even begin to tackle this problem. Right. Because it goes back to those big five things. Right. And these kids are just so lost and so programmed. Most of them, unless their parents are like me or you, have no clue about like health and, you know, gut health and food quality and those sorts of things. And, you know, the crazy thing is for people listening, you can be like me and still have kids that live an American life. Mm -hmm. Right. My kids know better, and yet they're happy to go get Wendy's. I'm like, what? Why would you do? Like, what were you thinking? Right. And of course, because, you know, they're so our our youngest is 17 going on 18. Okay. So it's like, I'm not going to sit here and boss them around. Right. They're free to do whatever they want. I'm not a dictator. And yet I'm disgusted. I'm just like, and then it's so funny because they'll, they'll kind of like tell on each other. Yeah, well, so-and-so went and did this. And I'm like, ew, why would you do that? Well, my friends were out, blah, 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 you know, and they have all their reasons or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? It's your health. Do with it what you please. I took care of it for 18 years. Now it's your turn, right? Mm -hmm. And and they they don't really take that to heart. And the crazy thing is, is I have this front row ticket that I didn't really ask for to watching the self destruction of today's youth, right? One of our kids has a job, which great, because we're not into freeloading. We were like, look, you're not in school. You're not doing the thing. Get a job. You're paying rent. Like, and then number one, so he's offended. He has to pay rent. Mind you, not even market rate values. Okay. We are so kind about the amount. We, we just want the kids to get into this idea that nothing is free. Right. Right. You need to contribute. He's, he gets all upset about that. And I'm like, whatever. Okay. You can go live somewhere else and pay full rent if you want. Have fun with that. Like, shut your mouth. Right. So there's that. But then like, so he goes to work. He likes to eat the junk food at work, which he knows better. He knows he shouldn't. He does it anyway. Sometimes he'll come home for lunch and eat real food. Then he comes home from work and sometimes he gets candy at work. Like we're not even talking organic candy. We're talking like bad for you candy. Okay. High fructose corn syrup the works. Okay. Then he wants to tell me how depressed he is, how this and that he is. Then he sits on his computer, which I told him not to buy. He did it anyway. He claimed it was going to be for this project and this other thing. And I'm like, look, if you're serious about this career, you need to buy this computer. Well, he didn't want that. He wanted that. Com- like Everybody knew he was lying. Okay. Why am I telling you this? Because I've now got an 18, 19 year old who knows better. Yeah, he's 19. He knows better. He legit knows. He chooses consciously to eat junk sit on a computer all waking moments whenever he's not at work, stay on a device, tell me about all of his mental health issues, refuse to take personal responsibility and just self-destruct, right? And the thing is, is like, I have not taken a backseat to this, right? Please don't think that I just let him self-destruct. I tried to intervene on multiple times, like, but it's like, he's an adult, okay? You can't force it on them. They have to want it. He's just one out of a million, 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 million kids. And they're all going through this collective experience where they're self-destructing. Like, how do we help them, right? Like, this is supposed to be the future generation and it's self-destructing at 18, 19, and 20. Mm -hmm. That's, it's scary. It's scary. It's almost like, where's the resilience? How do we, how do we build this to it? And it's like, how do we convince them to get off the the screens? How do we convince them to choose that they have the choice over what they want to watch and, and what choice means, I guess, probably what choice means. 
I think the scary thing for me is, is like, I recognize that number one, it's, you know, it's train a fourth child and the way he should go when he's older, he won't depart, right? It's looking at pregnant women today, or even women who are thinking about becoming pregnant and it's starting with them, right? That's the first mm-hmm. step because that's a 20 year cycle. And it's getting these people to recognize like how they should be doing things or better ways to be doing things or how to, mo- you know, do things in moderation, all that sort of stuff, right? But then we have to look at the 10 year olds, the 15 year olds, the 20 year olds. Is there any hope for them? And the hard answer is if they don't put away the devices and walk away from them, I don't think there's much hope. Like, I don't want to sound harsh, but when you're being programmed 24 seven, which is what these kids are at this point, I mean, how many young people put away their devices? Not many. You know what's crazy? My kid holds onto a device while doing the dishes. I'm like, you know, you could put that down, right? Uh huh. Uh-huh. And he's on the thing doing dishes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just like, I feel like you're stimulating your vagus nerve this whole time, kid, and the EMFs. You know, it's so funny. Okay. I'm not going to say, I'm not trying to sound crass, but to my boys, I, um, I talk about testicles all the time now. In fact, one of my kids, Anytime he has his phone in his pocket, I go, hey, what's going on, little T? And he immediately knows exactly. He gets so embarrassed by it. And it's so funny. Um, You know, and our other kid, I'm like, so when you grow up, how many testicles would you like? You know, and because the thing is, is like young men are at a higher, they're in the higher risk category of testicular cancer. Right. And I try to drive home that point to them. Like the choices you make right now are going to have long term health effects, you know, and sometimes when they're standing in the room with their dad, I go, I say to him, so between the three of you, how many testicles do you think there will be in a room in about 10 years? And everybody just goes, oh my goodness, would you stop? And I'm like, hey, I'm just, I'm just making the point, you know? And, and that's the thing, like, I don't think we talk to our kids enough about the long-term consequences of everyday choices, mm-hmm. right? Those five things, like, are we talking like, and then I was talking to a friend, I'm like, why, what, what are we even teaching kids in school anymore? We're not teaching them to garden. We're not teaching them nutrition. We're not teaching them how to eat well, how to be well, how to take care of themselves, how to take personal responsibility. Like, what are we really doing anymore? And they were like, I don't even know. <laughs> that kind of Math in a new way that no one knows how to do. That's that's all I've learned from friends that have kids. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't even know. Like, And, and it kind of just brings us back to we as a society, we absolutely have to start taking more personal responsibility. And, and I know that that's hard because we've almost been programmed again to think like we need all this support and all these resources and all these things. And, and yes, we do. And at the same time, like sometimes if you just step outside and walk in nature, a lot of what you need is already right there just waiting for you, right? Like look at the birds, like they don't need the internet. Right? They seem to be able to find each other just fine. Yeah, like they're they're doing okay, mm-hmm. but we're not. You know, like it's oh man, as a species, man, we have messed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, th- I think going back to basics would be so so ideal, and and really kind of that's one of my points for folks when they're like, well, how come I keep having all these food sensitivities? Why can't I get rid of them? Why is my gut staying trash? Why, you know, why do I keep it getting sick? And it's like, cause stress inputs, your stress can inputting. Can we tell everywhere. people, I mean, I feel like we need to say this out loud. You cannot supplement your way into better health. No. no. I think it's a misconception that you can. Well, half I the think people think you can supplement in. and pharmaceutical size yourself into better health. No, no, you can't, you can't. Well, in, in the supplements, I mean, half of them are owned by pharmaceutical companies now anyway. So mm-hmm. now we have a whole nother conundrum. And, well, and the, ingredients. the fact that some of them, they're trying to like ban because of uh-huh. course, pharma can't make money off of it. And I'm like, go figure, you know? No, no we got to be starting giving them all this control and power. Number one, we shouldn't be. But why aren't we taking it back for ourselves? Because we should be, you know, like we should be saying, you know what? I want xyz you know i want longevity or i want to wake up and not have pain in my joints right i want to wake up and not have headaches every day 
like healing is possible i feel like you could tell me on tv do they ever talk about like that healing is possible that you have the power okay yeah no. pretty sure i've never heard that unless you you're watching a specific programming um Got it. and okay. and even then usually those programs are sponsored by someone who's trying to sell you something unless it's a documentary wow but no no, there's, I've never heard it about healing as possible. It's usually like get Medicare part B or D or C or and just enter your zip code and we'll tell you exactly what you're going to get. But no, there's no like, hey, food, water, movement, air, you know, none of the basics. I, I'm, I'm kind of quietly shocked. I don't know why I'm shocked. I, I know I sh- like logically, I know I shouldn't be. And yet. I still am because what are we doing? <laughs> we are creating a society dependent on pharmaceuticals and programming to tell us what okay, to but do. You, okay. <laughs> I'm going to speak up for everybody listening because I know that they're listening to this thinking. This is, this is so big. You're a doctor. Give me some hope. What's like, what's the hopeful, like, what's the good news that you can tell us? Like, what are you seeing in your world? Because I know for me, like in my on my side of things, I'm seeing more people start to wake up a little bit. And yet at the same time, I'm still people see I still see people saying, Are McDonald's burger buns soy free? And I'm like, just stop talking. Like, just stop. <laughs> but like, what's the hope? Are are people more open to taking responsibility for their health like what's going on in the world your boots on the ground tell us yeah no I think a lot of people are starting to get there but there's always got to be this like convenience factor because we've all been programmed to get it quick get it fast you know the faster that you know weight loss for example let's let's just throw that one out there because it's probably one of the most common things that people are like hey i'm going to go and and see a doc so i can get some weight down and usually it's like if i tell you it's going to take you a year to start getting that weight down in your body you know in 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 alignment truly and something that's sustainable compared to i can get your weight down in 6 weeks most people are going to want that six weeks because it's quicker, it's more efficient, it's less time, it's less effort. And that's kind of unfortunately where we're at. So I have, what I see a lot is people want it, but they want it in the same way that we've been programmed and delivered since we were kids. Meaning like, I want the supersized results in the like quick manner, like fast. I want the fast food of natural health. And as much as I wish that I could give that to people, you know, we're, we're looking at people who are 40. I, I see a lot of folks in their thirties and forties. we got years to undo of different yeah. types of things. And so, you know, I think a lot of people are open to it, but the long-term, the long-term outcome is, is not as attractive because we've been programmed to believe that things need to happen fast. And so, you know, when we see people lining up to go get, any type of vaccine, for example, it's like, oh, I'm protected. If I go get my vaccine, I don't have to, you know, eat healthy, you know, take care of myself, whatnot. You know, when I see that, and I'm not anti anything at this point, I'm really just like, I want people to have a choice about their health, but I'm also like, think about vaccine versus actually putting in the effort to be healthy. Wouldn't you like to have the like actual effort and, and the sustainability of something that, you know, by being, you know, in doing all the things you can to be healthy, like the clean air, the clean food, the clean water, you know, like that. the crazy thing is based yeah. on what I see in my little world mm-hmm. and I'm including my kids in this. No, they don't. They do not want, you know, it was so funny. One of our kids is trying to convince us that he took this job because this is what he wants to do with his life. But then he goes and says, yeah, I did it because it was easy. It's an easy job. And I'm like, okay, so the truth comes out. You just want money for nothing kind of a thing, you know? And, and it's like, I want to believe I raised them to be better than that, but I'm fighting the programming, right? And one could argue like, well, why not just take away devices? Listen, I didn't give them devices for most of their lives, right? 
but they have friends. They're not stupid. You know, they're kids. They get around, you know, they go to other people's houses and they're exposed to things that you wouldn't choose to expose them to. And then, then they get their own money and they do their own thing. Right. And so it's hard because I, you know, I was going to ask you, what's the fix? Right. But as you're talking, I'm thinking there isn't one because she's, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. People want this quick thing, not a long-term thing. And it is part of the programming, right? Because that not that kind of what pharmaceuticals are all about too, right? It's like programming you into thinking that you'll take this magic pill, for lack of a better word, and you'll see these results within a certain time frame. And so I think that's really what, you know, you look at society of like people A or people B, the have or the have nots or whatever. It's like, I think you just have the motivated and the unmotivated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's kind of what it boils down to because, you know, even people who are motivated for the wrong reasons are still motivated, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And that's what we're lacking. Like we're lacking drive and motivation and going back to that personal responsibility element because even if you don't have the education, right? Even if you take a kid who's grown up for 20 years, not knowing like about food, nutrition, health, et cetera, but they're motivated, they'll learn and they'll adapt right? But then you take one of my kids who has all that knowledge, who's not motivated, and guess what? They sit on their butt. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. If they're not motivated, they're not going to do anything. And this is where sometimes that motivation has to come from something happening, which is why you'll see the folks coming to you with the food sensitivities and tolerances and allergies and folks coming to me because they don't know what else might help with the chronic pain, chronic illness. You know, they've seen every doctor. Pops out and says, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And that's when people finally wake up. Goodness, it's a shame because it's almost like they're waking up too late. Like how many people could have prevented so many issues if they had woke up a year before, Mm -hmm. six months before even? Heck, even three months before, right? When their body's still just hanging on by a thread, you know, I I can see like their immune system just barely hanging on. Like we we can do it, just just make this one little change and you know, right? Like how many people could have been spared? Like it's, you know what it reminds me of? Reminds me of celiac disease. Mm -hmm. You know, you can carry the gene for celiac disease, but not express it. Most people are diagnosed with celiac disease in a certain age range. Mm -hmm. It's about 21 to 33. And the reason why, those are literally the most stressful years of your lives. Because that's when you are going to college, moving multiple times, having children, you know, getting married, you know, changing jobs, all these highly stressful things. That's when the gene expresses itself because you're under all that stress. Mm -hmm. Like that's exactly what we're dealing with right now. It's true. It's true. It's absolutely true. And, and then the gene explodes and then now we've got, you know, all the symptoms and, and that's when they come. And I think a lot of people, you know, methylation is another thing. So this is for those of you listening, you're not sure what methylate is B12 and, and, and folate processing related to anxiety, related to depression, but also related to how you detox hormones in your body. This is a big issue with the gut as well for detox. And I think for, for all of us, our guts are becoming trashed because of just one lifestyle, two stress, you know, three, not putting the right priorities in the right place for health. And then you mentioned, we as a society have hijacked that word and turned it into something it's not, right? People think that detox is the seven day diet to like get rid of stuff where you drink juice or whatever, or activated charcoal detox is actually an ongoing daily process Mm. where the body cleans itself up. And if we don't support the detox organs, right, that system breaks down. Mm -hmm. That system breaks down. You're in just as much trouble as if your GI system breaks down. And the crazy thing is, is like, it's almost like people look at these systems as independent, right? They're not, they are highly connected systems. And it's, a, it's always a domino effect. You set off one system, you set off the rest. It's, I mean, how many people have you seen in your practice that come in with one hyper isolated issue? Not many. No, you, you're going to tie it all back. 
most of the time I tie it back to the vagus nerve because we're like stress induces bad behaviors, induces not, and it's not even necessarily bad this way. Stress induces behaviors. That's not a behavior. That's not as quite beneficial for you. And then from there, you're not taking care of yourself as it compounds. And then this whole cascade gut gets trashed, lymphatic system gets trashed, nervous system, you know, first thing to set off the rails. And then it just, like you said, a whole cascade of, of things just go down. You can, and you can trace it. Like I will literally get my whiteboard out and I can trace how it all played out. And with, and you know, if we went back, we probably could get pretty good accuracy on how it went down. I'm, I'm confident enough to say that. I'm actually really confident in you as well on that one. Cause I know you're right. Like you're absolutely right. And you know, it's, it's crazy to think that this is happening in real time to so many people and they're not looking like, I don't want to use the word inward, but that's kind of the word that I'm leaning towards. Like, you know what it is? They're not looking at those five things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're looking for an external fix, like a quick external what did the tv tell me to do it's like you said with pepto-bismol and stomach aches right they're not questioning what they ate they're not questioning if they chewed their food well they're not questioning food pairings they're not questioning quality of food they're not questioning all the other things that could lead to an upset stomach they're just saying where's the pepto-bismol what can we do to get rid of it right away which is great. You'll keep just getting rid of it right away for years and years until that doesn't work. Then what? Then what? Oh, oh my goodness. This is terrible. Here, <laughs> I thought we were going to have this tripper conversation and all we've done is like uncover everything that's wrong with everything. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. You know, the good, the, the silver lining on this is whoever's listening right now, guys, we spelled out why people get sick. We spelled yeah. out exactly what you need to be thinking about too. And I know people don't like to be told what to do, but like, like guys, listen, this is, this is the root of it. This is how illness happens. It starts with stress. You stop taking care of yourself. You make poor choices and life spirals downhill from there. So you guys just go back to the basics. The basics aren't that hard. They're not that complex. Well, it's not just that, but like, keep in mind 80, 20, right? Right. And and back, like, you let me know, is there a better percentage? Because I think a lot of people who are on the outside looking in or who are new to all of this, they're like, they think it's an extreme change, right? Well, I can never have X, Y, Z again. I can never do this again. I can never, never, you know, they think about all this. And I'm thinking, no, it's not that you can never have Doritos again. It's that you should eat Doritos once a week. Like, you should have, like, and here's the thing, though. You can't say... You should eat ice cream once a week, Doritos once a week, hot dogs once a week, chips once a week, nachos once a week, um, you know, a greasy burger once a week, a milk. Because if you do all of those things once a week, you're basically where you started, right? We're talking like one to two meals a week that encompass the things that you want to keep around, the Doritos and the greasy burgers or whatever. Yeah. You know, if you do the 80-20 lifestyle, I feel like you're going to see a huge improvement absolutely absolutely and really what it boils down to back like what we were saying before about the detox if you can help your body to detox on a daily basis not when you go and you party and you're like oh crap i need a detox because i went nuts no Mm -hmm. you're thinking like if you can get if you are working on clean air clean water clean food for most of the time your body's naturally going to help like it's going to be cleaned out enough and detoxing on a daily basis that when you give it a little bit of a hit, like the Doritos, or you give it, you know, a greasy burger, you know, it, it's going to rebound from it. Granted, it can be like every single day of something new, you know, it, cause then you're going to end up where you started. But if your body's great at detoxing on a daily basis, you can adapt to the things in life that stress it out. Yeah. Well, and we can't forget that movement element, right? Because like the lymphatic system, which is a core part of the the body's natural detoxing, it doesn't have a pump. You are the pump. Mm -hmm. Don't move. It doesn't move. Right. I think a lot of people don't know that. I think that's a huge, I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay. So that's why I'm so mad. That's why I'm like, what are they teaching kids in schools today? Did they tell them about that? I don't think so. Right. Like, what are you actually telling kids these days? Because kids don't know this stuff. Mm-mm, mm-mm. No. You know, 
and, nope. and parents aren't necessarily telling them, right? No, really in health class, all I learned was how not to get pregnant. And if I did what to do. And then like, literally I was like, oh, I have all these resources. If I get pregnant, great. That's not happening, but okay. But you don't learn. I mean, you learn stuff you already figured out like in eighth grade in high school, you know, health class. You're like, oh, awesome. Thanks for being okay. You know what? Don't even get me started on the <laughs> dumbing down of the educational system. Cause I know you saw that CDC thing recently where they lowered the standards and everybody's all upset about it. And I'm like, this is, this is exactly what's wrong, right? Like we are lowering, lowering the standards. And I think that's why to me, the solution is, and I'm not saying, you know, you know, unfortunately we can't help everybody else, but it's just going to be a harder road. We have to start looking at people who are thinking about becoming pregnant or people who are pregnant and we have to start with them. Yeah. Like this, this has to be like this massive grassroots change because I think like we blew it with this generation since mm-hmm. world war two. Like you look at the introduction of convenience foods and TVs and advertising in the home, we've blown it big time, right? So there's like this 70 year thing from then to now where, my goodness, I don't know how we help all these people. We are the sickest we've ever been, right? We're the lowest educated we've ever been. You know, like you hear tales from your grandparents about how their parents with sixth grade educations could run successful businesses. Show me a sixth grader who can do that today. Right? Few and far between. And, and so we have, we've blown it. Okay. I don't know how we fix it with the older generations. Like anybody who's basically eight years old and up, I don't know how we fix it. But for the eight and unders, man, we've got to go all hands on deck. We've got to change this for their sake, right? Like we have to, we have to turn this ship around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of you guys who are listening who have grandkids who have kids in this age range, I mean, this is the most, let's put it this way, moldable age range where you can influence. And since we already know the school is not going to do it, it's, you know, it is on us to, and, and, and exposing them to certain things. I mean, I kind of, you know, the dumbing down of our education, I'm kind of like, let me think about this a minute. I was in like AP, all the smart kid classes, right? Yeah. But the thing is, I, I couldn't, I can't work on an engine. Like I, my dad had to teach me that outside of school. I knew how to cook because my grandma helped me with it. But there's a lot of people who are in the same AP, you know, smart kid classes that like, let's put it this way, common sense, not there for me when I, when I got out of high school, I was kind of hindered. I wish that there would have been classes where literally we learned about clean air, clean water, you know, without an agenda, because unfortunately, without an agenda, that's the key. Yeah. Agenda and, yeah. and, you know, of not everyone knows what the agenda is, but that kind of stuff, you know, I, I wish I would have learned about the, the health basics because there just wasn't that kind of thing. And I think if there would have been like a home economics class that they were like, no, 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 you don't need to do home economics. You need to be in like AP English great listen to me now english teacher i am sure you're pretty proud of my english skills you know what we should almost do okay number one obviously you and i should revolutionize the education system yeah. but i almost feel like number one um kindergarten and first grade needs to be completely overhauled we should be teaching kids way different things but then i almost feel like a se- the senior year we should revolutionize senior year let them take their AP classes and do all the things. I, did. I mean, I was done with college at 19, right? I am a smart kid. I get it. Okay. I was driven to be done. I get it. But if senior year were dedicated to how to start your own apartment, how to um, change a tire, how to do like all the things, you know, and like you said, without an agenda, because let's be honest, if we don't put in that phrase without an agenda, you know, big pharma and Pepsi Cola are going to roll up and create the curriculum for us. Okay. So like how to do these things, you know, how to write a resume, how to get a job, how to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And that's all you do for senior year. Imagine how much better society would be because of it. I think it'd be huge. I think, cause I think that's where a lot of the meltdowns are coming from because you're not prepared. Like even getting out of, for example, naturopath school, yeah, they our business development was like here. Listen to all these Tony Robbins videos, and we're all like, <laughs> "That's great." The motivation side, that's wonderful, but like, I need the systematic. 
And, yeah. and so having the systems and understanding systems, understanding your thought process, understanding mental, oh. mental health. critical thinking. Do you realize they don't teach critical thinking in schools anymore? I did not know that. Okay. They're basically that. teaching kids to just sit down, shut up and read, right? They don't teach them critical thinking, the hows and the whys and like the analyzing, right? Like there are so many skills being lost in education right now. Oh, there goes another one, right? Like while we're sitting here and talking, these critical skills are just going out the window. Like it's scary. It is so scary. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do? I think we're starting our own school. And then you know what's funny? I actually wanted to. Um, I have been thinking about starting my own little academy in the middle of nowhere um, where people can join. And, and the funny thing is, is like, I wanted it to be like zero to six ish in terms mm-hmm. of age range. And I really wanted to make it so that parents had to go to like mandatory classes where they learn about, you know, grounding and sunshine, basically those five things mm-hmm. and how to incorporate that into their children's lives. And of course, encouraging people not to bring devices into their child's life. You know, it's a lot of people don't know. Um, up until the age 12, the brain is not really wired for electronics. Hmm. What we are doing, this is the first time in human history where we are essentially hijacking and rewiring people's brains at a massive scale. And we have no idea how it's going to affect them long-term. But here's what I will tell you. We've got more obese kids, more depressed kids, more kids with anxiety, more kids who want to jump off of a bridge. And, and it's like, you cannot ignore the lifestyle that we have kind of shoved onto these kids. Right. They didn't ask for this. We gave it to them. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's true. It's true. It ha- I mean, we, we do need to, and, and I know I do a lot of, of, of work with folks who are older, but it does come to my mind a lot of like, you know, I'm targeting the older generation trying to save our age range and higher, but, but what about creating something that is like a whole family education yes. to, and, and before like pre mom's pregnant, great whole family. Let's get you guys started on That's, how to create. A- That's what we need. We, and, and you know, it's unfortunate because, and I always go back to my World War II example because it's so relevant, right? I know people think it's not relevant, but it is. And here's why. We've gone from a society where people can make it on one income. And then you've got one person who kind of invests that time and energy into bringing up the family, right? Into raising the kids and doing the things. And we've switched over to where parents need two incomes. And it's not even that they necessarily need two incomes it's that they want the latest phone they want a new car they want a bigger house they want this other thing they want want, 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 want. and i'm not saying everybody does that some people just happen to live in a higher cost of living area and you know it that's just the way the cookie crumbles but then i see other people where it's just like they just want you know and and you have to ask yourself like what does that get you and your children in the long term how have your children benefited like okay, cool. You gave them the latest toy, but they don't even know how to garden. Yeah. You know? Like you gave them a device that programs them, but they don't know how to think for themselves. Mm-hmm. What have they done? This is a crime. Honestly, it really is. It's like a crime against humanity. Yeah. 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 We need to take the game and turn it into a real deal. That's that. You know, what's so funny. Speaking of that. I, um, I do that with my own kids, right? I actually created the rent money game and um, I told a couple of friends about it and they were like, you should make that a program and sell it. And I was like, yeah, right. People would not buy that. They were like, trust me, people would buy it. And um, I basically told my kids what rent costs and then we put a value on everything that they did. So school was minimum wage. Like if you went to school, you earned minimum wage, okay? So during school hours, that... And, and minimum wage was the max you could earn because you have no skills, right? Right, right. And then you could earn like um, a lower range type of thing if you were working on building a skill, right? But I paid you like dirt cheap, like three bucks an hour kind of a thing to build these skills. And um, like every, like chores were worth a certain value and 
And then I purposely, I rigged the, the system. I'm not going to lie. I rigged it a little bit to make sure that they would not survive off of your average 40 hour work week. Okay. So then, you know, they were running the number. Oh, and they had to pay taxes too. And um, they knew exactly like what minimum wage was and they had worked it out between themselves. Like, um, okay, we're not really making 14 an hour, really only making 10 an hour because of taxes and this and that. Like they knew how to play the game. They learned, they literally learned how to play this game. And then they would start figuring out how to game the system. Well, if I just do extra schoolwork and not do this other thing, I'll make more money, you know, and they have figured out like how many hours they had to work on a Saturday to make rent. And, and that became, you know, rather than nag them about like chores and things for this went on for months, you know, their father and I, all we would say to them was, have you made rent yet? And they knew what that meant. And they got on top of everything because it made everything real, right? Like all of a sudden there were these real consequences. Oh, and they didn't get sick pay. So at one point somebody got sick and I was like, well, you better figure out. Oh, and you're going to love this. You ready? If you didn't make rent, you had to lose services until you made up the money. Right. And so, um, you, you had to choose, like, if you wanted to lose your internet access, phone access, um, access to getting a ride anywhere. Cause they, I mean, they had to pay metaphorically for everything. Right. The one thing, the one service you couldn't turn off was food. Okay. I wouldn't let you turn off your food services. And so we had one kid who loved to bring it down to the wire and then didn't make rent and then had to go without like internet and TV and all these other things for like, um, I don't know, like a week or something until they had made up the pay and they were scrambling to make pay. And then what was funny is one kid went above and beyond and had money in the savings account because you were allowed to do that. So then the other kid was like, I'll do your laundry for $20. (laughs) So he already figured out like how, oh man. Like these kids were gaming each other and the system and, and all of it. I don't think people are teaching their kids these, these skills right? Like this is, this is what's being lost. And, and it's a shame because there's so much, right. And it, and it goes back to those five things in the vagus nerve. Like we aren't teaching these things to kids. Yeah. We're hurting them by not teaching them these things. It's true. It's true. And, and whether it happens in school or at home, I mean, we have to obviously take control and do it, do it at home since we know it's not happening at school. And or if it happens yeah. at school, it's with an agenda. Yeah. Like, like I hadn't even thought about that till you said it, but you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at that. Per- like, you know, I don't take sympathy on politicians very often, but mm-hmm. when Michelle Obama tried to do that food thing, do you remember that? Yeah. Like get healthy. F- like, and I think the original proposal really wasn't that bad, but oh my goodness. Once big food, big ag, big pharma got involved, it was like, it got ripped to shreds Mm -hmm. and it made you realize like you don't have a fighting chance against these giant mega corporations that just are in it for the money right like i think she would have been better off creating systems like you said education for families from the ground up she Mm -hmm. would have made more of an impact by empowering moms who buy the food than by trying to change the school system because moms would have started packing lunches and avoiding the school system altogether, right? Like there was a workaround there that nobody saw and didn't take advantage of. And, and that probably was the workaround. That would have, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. Oh man. Wow. We've been through some stuff today. Oh, haven't we? This is going to be good. This is going to be good. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, helping enlighten folks a little bit on this one. So Thank you for coming back on and chatting again and looking forward to doing some more of these. Yeah, it's always a pleasure because apparently you and I are really great at deciphering what's wrong with the world and how to fix it. I, th- I think we could do it single-handedly, both of us. Yeah, yeah. Got it, two of us. Not even single-handed, or four-handedly. There we go. I yeah. don't have these things. With our four hands, but like, right? Remember Captain Planet? By your powers combined. <laughs> We've got it. Oh, <laughs> Whew, that was a long one. Hope you guys enjoyed that podcast and learned a few things and you're fired up to help us with the future generations. So 
How can you find Kathleen? Head over to goraise.net. That's go, R-A-I-S-E dot net. You can find her huge database of all kinds of recipes for every single thing you can think of when it comes to food sensitivities and allergies. And if you want 50% off your first month of membership to her website, you can enter health50 to get that. All right, you've survived another episode of The Health Fix. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.